We're thrilled to have you here to our Family Leagues Conference. And my name is Rochelle Thompson, and I'm going to be your um, facilitator for this session. And I am the parent consultant that oversees uh, seven charter schools from one end of the valley to the other. So that is me, but I would love to take a second and <clears throat> introduce our, um, our speaker. Before we do that, I just want to tell you just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, our session is, um, I will give you a little bit of a, of a heads up 20 minutes before our session will end, and that will let Athena know that you have 10 minutes just to, just to, um, left and left to share with us your amazing knowledge. And, and then we will, um, announce some prizes and, and things like that. So um, let me introduce you to Athena. Athena Parker has worked in the world of children and youth with special health care needs for the last eight years. She was first introduced to the medical home portal in 2014 and used it frequently as a care coordinator while working at the University of Utah Pediatric Clinic. She joined the portal team in January of 2020 and currently works as the services support manager. Her primary roles include helping state partners maintain and customize portal content and promote the portal. Athena lives in Minnesota, hooray for remote working options, and enjoys hiking, canoeing, and reading. And I am thrilled for this um, opportunity to learn more about the medical home portal. I feel like it is underutilized and um, so much information can be gleaned from that portal. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Athena. Great. Okay, so before I get started, I just wanted to um, get a better sense of who's on our presentation today. So if you're comfortable turning on your cameras, I love seeing faces. It makes me feel like I'm not just presenting to a blank wall. <laughs> and if you can also just type in the chat, um, maybe why you're attending this conference today and just a, a, maybe a little bit about what your role is. Are you a caregiver? Are you a parent of a, a child with health, special health care needs? Um, I'd love to see some of your responses in the chat before we get started. Great, so working as a professional, helping youth transition, parent from Susan, parent of a child from Stephanie, 26 year old son with tuberous sclerosis, Deanna, great. Professional, parent of young, Adult with disabilities from caring, great. Need professional, school psych, social psychology. Working with UDAC, great. Family Voices in UDAC. Hi, Eileen. <laughs> we used to work a little bit together. Great. So we have, a, it looks like we have a good mix of, of both parents and professionals, and, and that is. Um, Fantastic, because the medical home portal has both of those audiences in mind uh, as, a, as a resource. So um, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing before I, I get going. And you can either, again, use the chat function or the little, um, let's see, do we have the raise hand function in this? Uh, in this? Okay, so I, if you've heard of the medical home portal before, I want you to go ahead and like, you can send an emoji reaction or put in the chat, yes. <laughs> I just kind of, or thumbs up, thanks. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we got a few thumbs up and hearts, not too many. Um, and if you, okay, perfect. So if you've used the portal in the last, let's say 30 days, can you give me another little reaction? Okay. So we've had just a few, not too many. So this is good. You're in the right place. We're going to learn all about it. In the time we have together, we can cover what the medical yeah, home portal sure. is, how you can use it, and then actually how you can help us make it a better resource too. So those are kind of the three um, areas we're going to hit on. And before I can um, show you my screen here, the medical home portal is a... It, 
it's a lot of things, uh, but primarily it's a web resource, an online resource for both um, families and professionals who care for children with special health care needs. And that is our mission is to be a reliable source of information and, and be able to provide content for both of those audiences. You should All right. share your screen. Now. Looks like I can share my screen now. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. Um, the, the URL is www.medicalhomeportal.org, as you can see here. And when I when you first come to the portal, um, you'll notice that there, there is a little bit of a map here. So we do we do partner with a few other states. We have been with Utah since the beginning of the portal. Um, inception and it's about 20 years old now and so that's really exciting to be able to have that so much, so much history with the state of Utah. So as a user coming to the medical home portal you can find all of the content if you if you um, just write come right to that URL the www.medicalhomeportal.org but for the best experience up at the top if you select your state uh, it will give you the most customized experience for where for where you're um, living, and so the um, it, and it will remember that too. You only have to select it once, and then it will it will remember that for each time you log in from that same device. So, um, first time you go to the portal, I encourage you to select the state of Utah, and then um, you'll get, you'll get the best customized experience. So. The website's divided into kind of a few different sections, and I'm going to go through uh, each of those a, a little bit. I'm going to focus on, we have a lot of information around diagnoses and newborn conditions, and then we have a whole section that's tailored toward parents and families, and, and all of the content in there has been written with, in partnership with the Utah Parent Center and from um, parents, and then we also have of this um, Utah Services Directory, which uh, we hope will be another valuable um, resource for you as well. So starting off, we have the two uh, condition sections of diagnoses and conditions and newborn disorders. And within the diagnoses and conditions section, there's, there's over 55 um, different diagnoses modules for sometimes common, sometimes rare conditions that we see in children um, and youth with special health care needs. And it goes into a lot of the, um, the protocols or the, the clinical assessment that would be needed. Um, so here's an example of one for um, spina bifida. And you can see it, it gives a lot of the a different, it gives like prognosis, practice guidelines, treatment management. So these are written, um, with the audience in mind for these is, is uh, medical professionals. However, we have found that parents really enjoy having this level of detail information, especially around a new diagnosis as well. So um, these are what the, the modules look like. And again, all the navigation here on the side can help you maybe skip ahead to some sections you're particularly looking at. One at the bottom we always include is this resources for families, um, which you can jump right to. And it will list off a few, uh, we have a frequently asked questions page that might be very interesting for somebody with a new diagnosis. Some links to some other websites that are uh, really good resources. And then um, links to our service directory, which I, which I mentioned before. And this is going to actually bring up specific providers. So if somebody um, is looking, has a, a child with a new diagnosis and they're, they're looking to locate maybe a pedi pediatric neurology practice, they could click on this number right here. And it would then take them to our directory listing for um, the providers in Utah that um, provide pediatric neurology. So that is, is one way that we try to link both the information and content around different diagnoses with ser services in the community. So again, that's just a little brief overview of the diagnoses and conditions section. 
Um, you're welcome to, again, come back and browse this list or um, another way you can um, find information. Again, if it's if you can't remember exactly where to navigate to, we always have this search bar up top. So if I was trying to find that module that I just looked at, I could type in the word spina bifida and it would produce some all the different search results related to that condition as well. The other main section we have that's specific to conditions is around newborn disorder, newborn disorders. And here we have, uh, I believe there's 45 uh, different newborn disorders now that are, are outlined here. And they're similar to our, our um, diagnoses and condition modules, but uh, a lot briefer. So Let's take a look at one. We'll look at cystic fibrosis, for example. So it gives a little bit of the medical background as well in terms of coding and testing for it, um, inheritance uh, and things like that. And then, it, and then it always ends with a section on a, what would be needed in terms of follow-up. So it directs both providers and families to know what would be best to do for follow-up after a positive screen. And at the bottom, again, we try to link to some really helpful resources. So again, here's some really um, uh, well um, credited and uh, um, authoritative, that's the word I was looking for, authoritative sites on, um, on this topic. And then we also, you'll see that little table of resource um, resources at the bottom. So again, here, this one shows um, cystic fibrosis clinics. So if I clicked on that, it would take me directly to these listings for um, two different uh, options in my, in my area that I could use to find services in my area. All right, I am going to pause right there for just a second. So I see there's a few things in the chat. And I would love to know if anybody has any questions up to this point. You can, again, type them in the chat. I'm also okay with people unmuting and asking things. If that's an option, I don't know if people have the ability to unmute themselves. I do have a question. Yeah, um, please. It pulled from Maryland and Utah. Now, it, you, you're under Utah services, but did, did I miss that? I, or was I correct in that? Nope, that's, yep, you saw that correctly. So when in each of our um, state-specific directories, we also include national resources. Okay. So that's why you're seeing both a, a pin marker in Utah and out in Maryland. Um, but the, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, in this case, offers services to people living regardless of where they live, if that makes sense. So um, you would be able to open this and see that they've got you know, information about insurance, finance, legal, other issues facing them. And they're also a, kind of a web-based um, uh, service. They also have a location finder for accredited um, centers nationwide. So in, within each state directory, sometimes you will see those little pin markers outside of that specific state because it's a service that you can still access regardless of where you live. Okay, thank you. Great question, thanks. All right. Any other questions before I move on to the next section? I have a question. Yeah, please. How do you, who's in charge of verifying the accuracy of these over time as things change and yeah. updated and how often? Yeah, great. So we we work with, we partner with Utah 211 for a good majority of our listings. And so we get um, data files from them twice annually that we can use to update our information. And then we also have a handful that we maintain within our own team. And we try to make sure that everything gets touched one, at least once every two years. And that would be either us calling to verify information or going out to a website and making sure that everything's still current. 
And as a, as a user on a website, you have the ability to see when things are last updated. So this one is one of our, an example of one that, you know, in the next few months, we would, we would want to verify their information because it's getting close to that um, two year, or it's just past the two year old mark. Um, but that's, yeah, that's a great question. That's our, that's our uh, gold standard is, is to make sure that all our records get touched once every two years. At least once every two years. We have some that get touched a lot more frequently than that as things, as services change. Uh, so. Great, thank you. Yeah, what other questions? Go ahead. Is there a general category for food allergies? No, right now there's not, but when the medical home portal has gone under a little bit of a transition this last year, we, um, they've developed a writing board uh, and they meet once a quarter and with a whole array of pride, uh, providers and, and practitioners, both in the state of Utah and outside the state of Utah to help us um, start to author more of that content. And all of the content goes through a pretty um, rigorous uh, writing process. So it has to be, it's written and it's peer reviewed just like a, like a medical journal. And so because of that, it does take us a while to get new content up, but we're always looking for suggestions on new content. So I will, I will write these down as areas that people are interested in. And I saw food allergies. I also saw that the previous comment said that they didn't see one on microcephaly, which is true. I don't think we have one on that currently. Um, but that doesn't mean there wouldn't be, um, doesn't mean there wouldn't still be con valuable content here for you. And, and I'll go into that a little bit when I go into the um, family section. So I'm gonna just write these down so I don't forget them. Okay. We'll keep the questions coming. This is great. I much prefer a, a, a more interactive presentation than just talking to you all for the next little while. <laughs> okay, so the within the families, we'll all go to the four families and parent section now. So this is, again, this is, uh, the target here is for anyone that's in a caregiver position. And the idea is that where it's from, um, even before a diagnosis is made all the way through adulthood, and on our left side navigation, you can kind of see that that's how the sections are split up. We, we go from before diagnosis to after diagnosis, early services, those zero to five, education in schools, uh, bullying, navigating transitions with your child. Um, and then there's like a few other miscellaneous categories. And within each of these, there's, there's um, you can, you can drill down to like more specifics. So let's say, for example, you're like, I'm in that early services uh, stage at the moment. You can, you can um, hit those little drop down arrows and get more information on early services or early intervention. Or maybe you're like, wow, I'm actually in the navigating um, transition section and I need to start thinking about things like guardianship um, and, and transitions after high school. Well, there's all there's all kinds of information about after high school options, um, guardianship and estate planning, health insurance and financial aids, and then a whole section on self advocacy too. And so, uh, again, there's a ton of ton of content in here, and so you can you can navigate it on the side here, or you can also, again, use that search bar at the top to say, I'm looking for information on early intervention, for example. And it's going to, you know, return anything that's related to early intervention. And if you're like, I specifically want stuff in, that's written for families about early intervention, you can click on that tab and drill down even further. And here's, so on, here's one from about early intervention for C or early intervention to preschool. Um, groups and therapies, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to search for the information you're looking for. So coming back to the four family section, we also have um, what we call our frequently asked questions pages. 
And, and these are um, meant to mirror a lot of the information that's found in the diagnoses and conditions section, but they're written again by parents of children with these same conditions. And so they, they, the focus of them is a little bit different than what you would find um, in the diagnoses and condition sections. It's, it's them thinking about some of the questions that they maybe wish they had answered when um, they first learned about diagnoses or things that they were made aware of. Um, so those, those have been a really popular section of our website. Um, for those that are providers on the call, one thing that's really nice about um, these pages is that you can, you can download them, you can print them here. I'll just show you an example. Right here, you can print. You can also share this page um, by either Facebook or Twitter, but also but just by copying the URL. And then we also are powered by Google Translate. So let's say, for example, this um, for a provider or a family, if you said, wow, this information would actually be really helpful if I had it in Spanish. Um, so you can translate any page on our website immediately into um, whatever language you are looking for and uh, and be able to print and share that way as well. So um, that's another feature of the website we think is really helpful for, for families and, and practitioners <laughs> for everyone. Um, some other sections in the website um, uh, or in this section of the website include things like taking care of yourself and your family um, and, and finding resources around respite care. Um, there's also another really popular section here is something called um, the care notebook. And I, um, let me search for it up here actually. This is a uh, one that the, the Utah Parent Center has helped us um, put together as well to make available on here, but it's a way of helping keep track of things like medication and hospitalizations. And it's all these downloadable PDFs that you can, you can choose to download the whole thing or just sections of it that make sense for you. Um, uh, and then, and then be able to have all that information in one spot. So it can be saved both electronically or printed off as paper copies as well. Um, so again, that's just a really brief rundown of the poor family section. And I'd like to pause there again for just a second and look at what questions we have coming in because I'm sure that sparked a few more ideas and questions. Let's see, okay, there's some good comments about the, the, the yep, thanks Rochelle. The medical home portal was initially created for professionals, but parents have enjoyed having a place to learn more. Thank you for that. Love the care notebook being online now, thanks. We also think we've moved into the 21st century finally with that, that's good. <laughs> um, it is, yeah, it's, it's downloadable, fillable PDFs now, so. Previously, it was a bunch of Word documents. We're grateful for that. So um, Stephanie says, I'm on the I'm on the respite care. It gives the Utah Parent Center for a place to call. Is the Utah Parent Center going to direct us to DSPD or are there respite care that we can use now? That's a great question for the Parent Center. I'm not sure on that. Rochelle, do you have a... Yeah, Stephanie, I would just suggest you giving us a call. So we are definitely... Um, someone that DSPD refers parents to, uh, we're just have a lot of resources there, but I would just give, give us a call and we can, we can discuss your, your different, um, individual, individual needs. So we would love to talk with you. Any other questions about the parent section? Are other states able to opt into this resource? Yeah, so when um, we uh, we work really closely with, right now we work with five different state health departments and um, our, our goal is to work with more, <laughs> we would love to. Uh, there, 
primarily we have tried to focus on um, trying to recruit uh, Title V ag or agencies that receive Title V funding, which is, is really in line with making sure um, that services are available for children with special health care needs in their state. Um, and some have their own, their own um, you know, resource directories or information that they, they're not interested, but that is something we're trying to expand. So we'll, we'll, we currently work with Montana, Utah, uh, Nevada, New Mexico, and Rhode Island. And we're in the process of bringing on um, Ohio this year, which is exciting. So if, if anyone, yeah, has any connections to any other state departments and would think they'd be interested, we always love to go uh, give presentations about who and what we are and what we can offer. So thanks for that question, Susan. Um, and it, in addition, if, if a state doesn't have a specific directory for us, anyone, any user on the website can always use the nationwide service and access the content, regardless of whether or not their state has partnered with us. Um, so uh, at the beginning of the presentation, when I was mentioning, mentioning that you can select into your specific state, if any user came to this website, they could, they could still see all of, all of the information around the different diagnoses and conditions, all the four parent info, what it wouldn't provide is those specific, um, it wouldn't provide a directory specific for their state services is the, is the, the difference. So great questions. All right, since we had a few, um, yes, I see a hand, Steph, Stephanie. Hi, Athena. Um, I was looking at your um, mental health and there was a really cool section called behavioral therapies. And my daughter's working with a really smart therapist. He's amazing. He has helped me to understand <clears throat> what the Dr. Spock book was trying to teach and letting us know that if you have a child with a disability, that um, you can behavior out that disability, such as um, if they need to brush their teeth or if they need to learn how to find the correct change, as long as you uh, do the behavior over and over and over through repetition, you can actually behavior that disability out of the person um, from B.F. Skinner, who is the father of behavioralism. The question that I have is um, on this behavior, it doesn't actually mention that. It doesn't mention about who you can contact to have somebody help you do those kind of therapies. Is that something that's not available or is this just a web, this part of the website that's just educational? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we, we, we have those little grids that I showed you on the diagnoses and conditions section and the newborn disorders link directly to the directory. The, this section does not, but that doesn't mean it's not available. So I know in just a second, I'm going to go to the directory and show you how to do some specific searches there. So I'll show you how to do the behavior therapy search when we go there. Perfect. Thanks. Great question. Okay, perfect. All right, I know there was a few professionals on the site too, so I'm just gonna briefly, or on this presentation, so I'm gonna briefly touch on the for professionals section as well. And, and again, it, it kind of covers a lot of, um, the, the goal here is to target maybe uh, general pediatricians who are working in practices where they, might not see these conditions as frequently and need to educate themselves about it. Um, or, uh, or just other um, providers that are trying to provide more wraparound services for their, for their children. So there is a bunch of information about coding and billing and how to set up a medical home practice. Um, and, then, and then this is probably our, our favorite, our most favorite section by providers is this common issues. So lots of times there, and again, for parents as well, um, to be able to learn more about some of those common conditions that re regardless of the diagnosis um, are an issue. Things like toilet training and sleep and puberty. Uh, regardless of the condition, um, there's always a lot of questions around those. And so there's some really great information in here. Here's a great one. <clears throat> 
drooling. <laughs> Drooling's a really, it, it, you know, it spans a lot of different conditions and there's all kinds of um, great information in here about uh, ideas for treating it and um, some pearls and alerts is what we call them, like really good lessons learned kind of a thing and some therapies, medications. And then again, at the bottom, we try to link to resources as much as we can and provide um, different tools. And then the, in this common and the common issues pages, we do again link to our, our service categories. So this one in particular um, links to, sorry, I switched my view to nationwide. That's why it's not showing the Utah providers. But again, we link to things like dentistry and um, occupational therapy, other kinds of services that might help um, providers guide their patients to appropriate services. Let me go back up quick and make sure I'm in Utah because that is where we are at today. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, that should be the view you would see though if you came in from Utah, you'd get, sorry, at the bottom here, that more specific view of, of specific service providers in the state. And then um, within the professionals and uh, physicians and professionals guide, there's also a bunch of information around supporting families in um, school settings, feeding and nutrition, uh, guidelines and algorithms. This again is a pretty popular section for evaluating for like developmental disease. This is a brand new one that was just published not that long ago, the um, diabetes, pediatric diabetes screening and then a bunch of information around screening and prevention as well, um, so you can see here. All right, any, any quick questions from our, uh, our professionals? Are those working with children and youth in a, in a more, uh, maybe a medical setting? All right, I'm just going to navigate to our, the last section we're going to talk about today, which is the Utah Services Directory. So again, this is, uh, we try to link to the, this content um, throughout the website, but you may just want to come here directly to look for services. So the, the idea of the service directory is that it's going to um, help you connect with services in your local area. So we have a couple different ways, again, of searching this directory. You can do term searches, you can do a category search, you can search by location. We also have a list of all the kind of the different categories that we um, uh, support through our website. So let's use um, the example that was brought up about behavior therapy. So I'm just, I'm gonna do it as a category search here to show you how that works. So if I start to type in the word behavior, it's actually gonna generate some categories for me that we have. So I could look at applied behavior analysis. I could look at behavior therapies. I could also look at developmental behavioral pediatrics. Um, and those are all categories that we use. So I'm actually gonna select the behavior therapies and go ahead and just do a, a, a general search this way. And again, here's where it's, it's going to list the agency. It's gonna show a map of all the different providers um, to make things uh, interesting, let's zoom in on this vernal area because there's always a little bit of, um, you know, it seems like people are always looking for services out there. So I can click on this little um, toggle and, and it's going to bring up this listing. And then if I wanted to see more information, um, I can click on that title and it's going to take me to a little brief description about what's offered there, some contact information. I can also go directly to their website from here. And again, it shows on the end of all of these, it always shows our source and when it was last updated. So this one was pretty frequently updated and the sources, it, this one does come from United, from United Way 211. Um, so that's a little bit about how to search the directory. A quick question. And yeah, please. So would, would you suggest to parents, at the Parent Center, we, we always, um, you know, encourage parents when looking for providers to follow their insurance. Yes. Uh, that can be 
as I know all of us can can attest that that's not always an easy thing to do um, yeah. because the lists aren't aren't accurate and things like that. Would they, would you suggest that this could be just another you know search your insurance, have a list, and then maybe go to the home portal and have it be kind of a a second place to kind of search out a good a good provider? Yeah, both ways. When we know about insurance information, we try to provide it. Um, and with the caveat that, of course, um, some, you know, it, it can vary by plan too. So sometimes we get information from a provider that says like, you know, we accept Blue Cross Blue Shield and um, Select Health, but there may be variations like based on the plan too. So we always, you know, be sure you check with your insurance as well. Um, or it's only specific providers in that practice that they could potentially see. And, and we don't currently have the ability to maintain that level of detail on, on the medical home portal. Um, so yeah, coming if, if they knew the name of an agency or um, they could either start here and go do the insurance or start with insurance and come here, it, it probably goes um, vice versa. But where, where we do know it, we do try to provide um, insurance information. Let me see if I can just find a quick example of what that might look like. Um, I should have come ready with an example. That's a, that's a great. Um, the other way you can search this is, for example, if you have a specific service in mind. So let's say kids on the move. Let's just look at them really quick. I know the name of the agency. I can come down. I can see. Um, where they're located, and then I could go to their um, specific website. So here's one. I mean, it is kind of generic information, except most insurance plans, self-pay, Medicaid, and clergy-assisted pay. So it doesn't, sometimes specific plans are listed, but not always. That's okay. also something uh, that information changes really frequently, so it's hard for us to um, list two, two specific kind of information. So. Great question. I just wanted to let you know you we've got 10 more minutes. Thank you. Gosh, that went fast. <laughs> Great. Looks like somebody's already finding some helpful information in the toilet training section. We do have some really good articles on toilet training. So perfect. All right. Any other um, questions or searches people want me to show as a quick example? And then I, I just have one final section um, for us to wrap up with. Actually, could you do a search on dyslexia? Yeah. I know we don't have a category for dyslexia, so I'll just go ahead and search it up here. And of course, somebody's gonna have to help me spell that because my spelling is atrocious. Uh, D-S-Y, dyslexia, is that right? Thank you. <laughs> No, no search results. Wow. Okay, let's let's search another place because I know we have a little bit of content. On I know this. that um, across the board in education, dyslexia falls under specific learning disability. Not sure if medical home follows that, but that's also a possibility. It might be under specific learning disability. So, thank you for that comment. It looks like that's exactly what it's under. And we do have a little bit of a section on that. And I know this links to some um, learning disability or, or uh, developmental testing that can be done. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom here and see what information and resources are provided. So this links to our directory around counseling services, neuropsychiatry, and neuropsychological assessment. Um, let me go back to the directory. I think I spelled that wrong the first time, so let's try again. There we go. I knew there were some in here. It said it produced no results earlier, so. Here's some great examples. Dyslexia Center of Utah, Learning Solutions. Let's click on, let's click on that first one. Seems like a great resource. And it, it, it gives a little bit of information about what they provide and where they're located. So that would be a great resource.
All right, let me just. Okay, so, and somebody else made a comment that there's a lot of information on the website about insurance and funding for special health care needs. That is as true. We, we try to provide a lot of information. We know that um, there's a whole section on, it's called financing, financing your child's um, health, or funding your child uh, with special health care needs. So that's, it's got a lot of really great information on the different waivers that are available. Um, uh, and, and then just information about how to navigate insurance too. So it's a good section. Okay, the last thing I wanna wrap up with is um, actually a little bit about how you all can help us make the portal a better resource. So we, uh, we like I said, we partner with Utah 211 on a lot of our information, but our, our Utah services directory at the moment has a little under 4,000 listings. And I actually do all the maintenance on it. <laughs> and, and you can imagine that that's, that's a hard, that's a, that's a lot of um, listings for one person to review and make sure they're accurate and things. So we do actually really rely a lot on those that are, are on the ground using the services to help us keep our information accurate. So I'm just going to show you a couple little tools we have that if you ever come across something on the medical home portal that you're like, wow, that, that phone number is not right, or they have moved, or that is not the service they provide, we would love, we would love to hear that. So we have here, this is a great example. We have these suggest edit buttons where you can, it's going to pop up a, a form that you can fill out and, and make a note about any information that's changed. And that really helps us just make sure we have up-to-date information on the website. Another place is if you have a new provider, we have the suggest new provider button. If you're, if you're searching our directory and you don't see the provider that you're looking for, we would love for you to just make a quick note about a new, a new service or a provider that we're not aware of that we could add to our directory for other people. And um, you don't have to fill out the form in a ton of detail at the, at the bare minimum. If you can give us a name and a web address, I can usually get the rest of the information from there. And that really helps us make the, the service directory be a lot more valuable for, for everyone involved. One last place you can also help us make edits is on these little pins. If you notice, if you zoom in on a place and you're like, that, that is not in, that, that pin's showing up in the wrong spot. There's these little feedback buttons that you can also give us suggest an editor or this is an incorrect location or this doesn't exist anymore. So we're always trying to make um, improvements to the, the medical home portal, but we are a really small team. And so any, any uh, outside help we can get on that is always appreciated. Well, and the perfect example is um, Karen in the chat put in about um, a local group called Decoding Dyslexia Utah. So she could use just what you've illustrated to let you know about, about them. Exactly. Perfect. That's, that's the kind of thing we need. Um, because there are, there are a lot of services that we, you know, we try to keep tabs on what's happening, but um, sometimes there's new things that come up that we just don't hear about, or, or they, they don't come in to us from 211 because it's, uh, they, they tend to be more like the social services and not so much the medical services, especially. So we love to hear about services like that. And, and I'm writing them. I'm writing that one down. <laughs> okay. And, and Heather also put in the chat that the Dyslexia Center has stated they cannot diagnose dyslexia if parents are searching for a diagnosis. Okay. So she said, correct her if she's wrong, but that that's what she understands. And then Suzanne says, who can diagnose? That's this a great question. I, that, that is where my... I, I, my expertise end, I'll be honest. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm good at directing people to places, but I'm less knowledgeable about. Uh... And, and maybe if you could show the edit button, Karen's yeah. the edit button. Can you just go over that one more time? So you were on the dyslexia center. Let's go back to that listing. Okay. 
So sorry. So it should show up for everyone right on the right hand side. I'm going to circle it with my mouse right now. Here are our suggested a button. Did that answer? It looked like it was Karen's question. And then Heather made a comment that neuropsych or neurologist um, might be able to provide a diagnosis or schools can do an SLD educational classification. And sometimes those learning disabilities have to be di like they have to be done through this, the school testing in order to get services in the school. Um, and that uh, article on the specific learning disabilities might be able to provide some more information about that. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Sorry, my microphone's finally working. Okay, so when I did that, it's changing the Dyslexia Center of Utah. If I have something to add rather than edit, so there should be there should be a notes box that you can put in a note, and if you just type in your note about um, oh, so put it, so don't change put my name and everything, and then put the um, what I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Yes, okay. I see another hand up from Stephanie. Hi, Athena. Um, where's that button that you were talking about where if it's not on the website, we can uh, add a suggestion? I couldn't yeah. find that one. So if you go right to the, click on the Utah Services Directory link button, and then right under where you do your search, there's the Suggest a New Provider button. Are you seeing it? And that's probably the one that Karen should have used to add decoding dyslexia, but that's okay. Yeah, um, they they I'm... actually yeah they go to the same place. Essentially. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if I if you if you are trying to make an edit on a record, and I can see oh you're actually trying to suggest a new record, I can I can create a new record on the back end. So it's 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 fine to use either of those. It just helps. Um, a little bit in our review process is all. But. I changed it to the su suggested new provider one. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. Okay, well, it looks like our time has come to a close. This has been great, uh, wonderful questions and and very useful. I love nuts and bolts and being able to really use um, what what you have have been able to to teach us. This has been just. Just really perfect. Do you have anything else you'd like to to add at the end? You know, the, the last thing I'm going to do is just if you if you want to reach out to um, anyone on the portal, you can see there's this get help more help in Utah, and that's um, it's going to link. We we partner really heavily with the integrated services team at the Utah Department of Health. They're um, one of our our main funders, and then also this contact button down at the bottom has our whole um, portal team listed. So you can see there's there's my email too. You're welcome to email me directly if you have follow-up questions or suggestions for content, or if you're trying to find something and can't find it, I'm always happy to help as well. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much.